In this video, I'm going to show you guys my favorite Japanese bentos at Don Quixote. So what a lot of people don't know is that Don Quixote actually has some really good Japanese bentos. A lot of people go to convenience stores or department stores, but people sleep on Don Quixote when in fact they have really inexpensive and affordable bentos. In my opinion, the value is a lot better than convenience stores because of just how much you get for the price. So when I'm really hungry, then I go to Don Quixote. So Don Quixote is known for having all sorts of Japanese goods. Some of them are larger than the other so you need to be mindful the one I went to is a mega donkey which just means they have everything because it is a mega donkey then they have a supermarket which means they do have a deli section which is where I got all of these lunch bentos oh and one tip for you guys if you go there in the evening then they sell the Japanese bentos at a reduced price so for today's video we were actually planning on going to another street food area but it started to rain the typhoons coming so we had to do something inside and therefore like what better way than to show you guys some of like my favorite indoor bento foods at Don Quixote. So that's what we're doing today. So if you like this video, then thank the weather. I guess if you don't like this video, then blame the weather. And if you like my Tokyo shirt, I'm gonna leave a link below for you guys to check it out. All right, let's check out my top foods from Don Quixote. Number seven, beef kalbi yakiniku. I love how it just comes with an egg and it's an onsen tamago, meaning that it's cooked halfway so it gets like really, really runny. Ah, it's really sweet and garlicky. Dip it a little bit into the egg because that's how we roll. Oh yeah, sounds good. Mm. The meat is quite tender and when you dip it in the egg, you get the eggy flavor in there mixed in with a like barbecue tare sauce. It's quite sweet, just like a really, really gooey masterpiece. To be honest, like I actually prefer this than going to the gyudon shops. I find the meat to be more tender and I just like the sauce better. And kalbi in general is a good meat, right? It's like really tender. This isn't my go-to really. I usually go for fish over meat, but I can tell this will taste good because <laughs> it smells good. <laughs> it's like, look at how gl- how is it glistening? Like, mm, mm, mm. Kurekura. 3.98. It's really good value. I mean, the meat isn't the best in the world, but for 3.98 and this much meat comes with it, that's good. I really like the tare. The sauce, it's like really sweet and mm, coats the rice really well. I can just eat eat the sauce and rice together. Number six, Makuno Uchi Nori Ben. Are y'all ready for this? <laughs> So this is a nori bento and I recommend this one because it just has a lot of different foods in it. It has a different like menu items. It has like a tempura shrimp, shumai, which is nice. It has a chicken ball, fish tartare, and then it has kimpira, which is a gobo root. It has egg and then again, it has a potato. And then you have rice here, which is laden with some nori. You get kind of like all of it. Like it's a very Japanese type bento and comes with everything. Let's just start with like the main attraction because you know I don't like to mess around with stuff fried fish can't ever go wrong with fried fish the fish is decent it's not like the crispiest fried fish you'll ever have it's kind of like what you expect in a bento for like this kind of fish but the sauce itself the tartar sauce is really nice and it has kind of like a like a sourness to it look at that shumai basically this is more of like a Chinese dish but for some reason you find it a lot in Japanese dishes Mmm, very glutinous. Yeah, I mean, standard. It's very standard. This is like very on par with a Japanese bento. And this is like chicken balls, and it's a little bit sweet, I expect. It's soft. Um, sometimes the chicken balls is like gristly, but this one is not so gristly. It's just like pure meat. There was actually some grilled fish bentos, but I decided to stay away. I've, I've had it a few times and I've never really liked it because I find that the grilled fish is either like too fishy for me or like just like too soggy or I don't know. I, for some reason, I've never had a good experience getting the grilled fish, so I like never have it myself. Like this is probably like the closest I'll get to like a, the Japanese side bentos. And this is uh, Paolo's top seven. So this is not what I usually buy. 
and especially nori bang is like a um how do you say it's like a type of bento that never like gets the shine it's always like a wakiyaku how to say wakiyaku assortment no like if it was like a drama like there's like a main person this is like a school teacher or something like supporting character yeah like super super supporting character that like never gets on the camera like once a week or something like you what? I'm a sidekick. I'm more like yakiniku bento. It's so delicious, actually. It's quite big. The temperature is really good. It has hint of like a coconut shrimp, but still has sweet temperature. Yeah, it's like 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 it's Oh, so between rice and nori, it has bonito flakes like this, and I think there's like a little bit of mayonnaise. Yeah, so like it's, it does have a flavor. What is it? you man? I would actually buy this. Number five, tuna salmon nishoku don. I really enjoy sashimi, but I also love the fish bowls like this. One of my favorites is negitoro and it's negitoro is kind of like a mashed up tuna but this one is nice because it comes with negitoro, sashimi salmon, your regular maguro, your tuna and it also comes with salmon bits like like chopped up salmon. I think we're supposed to eat this with chopsticks but maybe a spoon is fine. Oh I think I put way too much wasabi on there but oh wells. Mmm. The negitoro is quite buttery and soft and fluffy. For some reason, I feel like it doesn't have a lot of taste that you get in like really like nice sushi restaurants. So you almost want to put a lot of like soy sauce on it to like get that taste. But I still like negitoro nonetheless. Like the fish at convenience stores, the fish at Don Quixote is like not going to be like the freshest fish in the world, like to be honest with you. But still, if you want, just avoid all the fried food, if you want to avoid all the meat and stuff, it's like, this is a good alternative. And 398 yen for all of this fish, it's quite, it's, again, it's uh, as cheap as, you know, some onigiris. And you get all of this food. So this is actually what I buy on a daily basis. I know it's not the best, but I love sushi. And if I go to a sushi restaurant, then like, if I have like one or two pieces, it goes up to this price. But this one you get like full sashimi pieces. They actually have different like fish combinations. This one's like with salmon and tuna. Like, they have only tuna or like only salmon. So you can just go there and like choose the one that you like on the day. Like I bought this so many times. I usually think their salmon's a bit too oily, but their tuna is actually pretty good. Like not like they're super good, but like it's edible. <laughs> Better than the salmon. Number four, unaju. Unagi. So unagi in general, it's basically grilled freshwater eel. And the opposite of that is anago, which is like kind of the opposite. <laughs> well, the other one is like opposite water. So one's like from the mouth. Yeah, one is fresh water, one salt water. But check this out. This one was like only, well, I wouldn't say only, but it's 690 yen. Usually when you get unagi, it costs like 1200 yen, 1500 yen. So this is quite a good value if you've never had unagi and you want to try it. It usually comes with a sweet sauce on top, but it comes with like a brown rice in this. Sometimes it comes with a, a white rice, but in this one, they comes with a brown rice. It comes with a tamagoyaki and it has some pickles. I don't know, like bentos. Japanese people really love their pickles. And then it comes with like this, uh, uh, sancho which is like a almost like a Chinese spice kind of gives like a numbing effect and it's a little bit spicy but not too spicy like in this sense this one is not like the spiciest sancho let's take like the first bite it's cool how they like leave the skin still on the eel so you can see like if I were just like to pick this whole thing up which I'm gonna do you can see on the back side here you can still see the skin of the um, unagi take the first bite Mmm, the unagi is still moist. The sauce itself, as expected, is really sweet. But the sancho on top of it kind of gives it, like it balances out the sweetness and gives it a little bit of a, like a spicy kick. Overall, this is like a good unagi meal. 
I think maybe someone that's not, not super hungry, this would be perfect. But if you're really, really hungry, maybe the rice will tide you over, but there's just not a lot of meat. I just like how they give you this option at Donkey, whereas in like a lot of convenience stores, you'll never find Unagi. $6.98. Good deal. I'm surprised how big the unagi piece is. Oh wow, it's really thick. What is it? It tastes like unagi. It tastes better? It tastes different. Sauce? No, the fish. You know how unagi usually like melts really, really soft and like really oily? This is like really tampaku. It's light, light, not light. Um, dense. Dense. Another word. Not dry, but like less oily. Oh wow, it's like you're eating completely like different thing. I'm usually used to like really fluffy um, type of unagi versus like crispy grilled. Your nose looks like it's pointing to the sky. Unagis are all high class and there are two different types, crispy and fluffy. And I prefer fluffy, some people prefer crispy, you know? Which one is that? Neither. <laughs> That's why I'm like, what is this? Put a nozzle on it. It's like I'm eating grilled fish, like regular grilled fish. No. I like it. Number three, jumbo karage. This presentation would not be complete without some fried chicken from Donkey. So the difference between this fried chicken karage and the katsu is the katsu is breaded with panko and this is breaded with flour. To be honest, I actually prefer when it's breaded with flour because you get like more of a crunch. They're both good, but damn fried chicken. It actually came with like two options at the store. One was a daikon oroshi, but I chose this yuzu kosho. It's like mixing wasabi and like citrus together. I guess that's how I would explain it. Drippy drip, just like that. Look, it's just kind of like wasabi. See how like thick it is? Mm. Since I've like microwaved it, it doesn't have that crunch that I expected, which is fine. The meat itself is still pretty tender and juicy. Because I've added the kosho, like you get a lot of like savoriness. And so I actually prefer that. I kind of like the saltiness. I could just eat fried chicken all day. I like how it comes with the spaghetti, the mashed potatoes, and again, the pickles. Definitely a full meal. You can tell though, cause like you get so much meat. This is like something that Micah wouldn't be able to finish. I could definitely finish this. Good fried chicken, but doesn't beat Micah's mom's fried chicken. Use the kosho that I can understand. This I wouldn't buy for a lunch. Let me try Paolo's lunch. It's a bit dry for me. It's not my favorite. Number two, Menchi Katsu. In fact, there's so many fried foods at Don Quixote. I like the menchi katsu, the aji fry, and the fried chicken. Unfortunately, I just can't eat all of them today. So I want to choose my favorite and I don't know. See, the thing is, I actually like the fried chicken. I like the aji fry, probably is like my least favorite out of the three. But I would say, depending on my mood, I'll go for the menchi katsu or the fried chicken. But since we have other fried chicken already, then I decided to go with the menchi katsu. And check out this fried delight. Oh, the crunch we wanted. It's so crispity crunchity. Have to do the ASMR shot again, like always. What's interesting about this, like you'll get like that definitely like crunchy, crunchy bits. The meat actually inside is very fluffy and airy. It's not like a dense meat at all. Mm. There's bits of onions in here. If you've ever had turkey stuffing, then the meat is almost kind of like that, but a little more dense. But it's on the area side. It's not, not like a really like in some of the menchi katsu I've had. It's almost eating like a meat potato chip. It's so good. Because I was hungry before. I'm not hungry for this. Tell me how you really feel. That's how I feel. Pon, 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 the kanji. It's crispy though. Yeah. Pon! The kanji. <laughs> and number one, chicken katsu curry. I love this thing. Put it this way. If my go-to had a go-to, this would be its go-to. It's so good and this is like what I always get when I'm really, really super hungry. Just look at the volume and it's oh so delicious. For all of this meat, 
It could feed like seven children. One slice for each child. One, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six. Oh, only six children, sorry. Well, the last child could get the pickles here. I personally, I like to like put some Tabasco sauce or some hot sauce in it. Today, we should put hot sauce. I don't know, should we put hot sauce? Do you want a hot sauce on it, Michael? No? Okay, no hot sauce. Michael says no hot sauce. Oh, look at that. Let me just like bust out a piece. Look at that, that's like the biggest piece in the world. This is gonna go into this child's mouth. And look at that drippy drip. <laughs> Look at that drippy drip. All right, drip, drip. Look how thick that curry is. Mmm. Oh, that's so delicious. The curry is quite thick. The meat itself, I believe they're using uh, a breast milk. You said breast milk. <laughs> Did I say breast milk? <laughs> I thought they used breast. So they use breast meat. It's not the like the, the juiciest or the most tender part of the chicken, but it's just so volumey. And the outside bits are still crispy and crunchy. If you look really closely, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's like a layer of like skin, so I don't think they've like completely taken off um, the skin. So like there's like a fatty center. So once you bite into it, you get like that initial crunch, and then you get like a gooey kind of layer, which is probably the skin or the fat. The curry itself is your like standard Japanese curry. It's uh, quite sweet. It goes well with a chicken katsu. The rice is pretty standard. You'll definitely not find this at any convenience store. At least I've never seen it. Definitely, this is like the hungry man's go-to, 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 go-to. <laughs> this is like what a teenager boy would eat. <laughs> hey, I'm not a teenager. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was gonna be more dry. It was pretty good. I actually don't think donkey food is always the best, but uh, I don't hate this. It's crispy, quite juicy for breasts. Chicken <laughs> breast. Chicken breast. Chicken breast. What's wrong with us? Just don't be So, anyways, guys. If you like this video, help me out and hit that like button. If you want to support the channel, I'll leave some links in the description for you guys to check out. And if you want to see more adventures in Tokyo or Japan, hit that subscribe button and the bell button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.